Hello everybody. Um, just tried to record this video twice and I'm having fun doing it because the first one was too long and the second one something went wrong. So I'm hoping this video is going to go swimmingly and then I'll be able to finish. Um, so I'm doing another obviously little MBTI blog um, for you to have a think about. Um, see what you think about this little concept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about functions, okay? And I'm going to start talking about them in a, in a small series of, of videos about functions. And I suppose as a typical ENFJ, I'm going to be what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to compare functions in pairs and in sets because often I think what people what happens is that people forget that functions come in pairs and sets and they talk about functions on their own and really that's not necessarily the best way to approach it because if you look at them in pairs, you can see similarities and differences between them so that you can kind of get a root idea followed by the branches, which I think makes a bit more sense. So I'm going to try to explore that. So first thing I need to do is just a little simple explanation of how MBTI works in these ways first so that you can get an idea about that firstly. Um, so everybody has perceiving and judging functions and they're both introverted and extroverted in different ways. So as an ENFJ myself, I have two judging functions, extroverted feeling and introverted thinking, and then I have two perceiving functions. I have introverted intuition and extroverted sensing. So those are my judging and perceiving functions. I need them all. Um, without the pairing in MBTI, this just wouldn't work because you just end up with dysfunctional people because the, problem, the, the whole point is, is that um, without being able to see the world outwardly, perceive the world outwardly, and then internally figure it out, and then judge the world externally and internally figure it out, then people wouldn't be able to gather new information externally and then figure it out inwardly. That just So people need those different things in order to work, basically. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to talk about my first function. Makes most sense to talk about my most dominant function so that I can give you an explanation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it with extroverted thinking. Now you would think that I don't have really have a relationship with extroverted thinking because it's my eighth function as an ENFJ so it's right down the bottom in my subconscious and therefore I should now have no relationship with extroverted thinking at all. So, but that to me just doesn't really make any sense. So, and I'm going to explain that by showing you my lovely new prop over here. I have a new prop now. This is my lovely FE cup here. As you can see, it's a bit disappointing because it, it's actually it's actually iron. So you look uh, disappointing. It's not an extroverted feeling cup. But anyway, so in my last video, I talked about how functions. You know, once when you're filling out an MBTI test you're figuring out how much you may feel about the world and then how much you think about it, etc. So with this particular thing, I'm saying this is my judgment cup. Um, so this isn't necessarily an FE cup, but a JE cup, like a judging, extroverted judging cup, or even just a judging cup. So you could say that most of it was extroverted feeling, and then some of it was introverted feeling, and some of it was introverted thinking and then a tiny little bit at the top would be extroverted thinking so I still have some extroverted thinking even if it's right down in my subconscious so it's still a part of me but I think that there's a very different thing between these two things and they're both extroverted judging functions so what's the commonality between them so really we need to describe the common ground between extroverted feeling and extroverted thinking so that we can have a look at then the difference, differences between the two and it will give you an idea about the root and then the branches so let's describe the common ground okay so really the essence of it is is that with both extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling what we're doing is we're going out into the world and we're talking about a judgment okay so 
mostly we talk about people bouncing ideas off of other people, which is much more of a kind of extroverted intuition idea. You know, if you're going out into the world and throwing loads of ideas about, then that's extroverted intuition. But if you're going out into the world and saying, I feel this about this, I think this about this, then what you're doing is you're giving out these judgments in order that when they bounce off of somebody else, they can tell you what they think or how they feel about the world. And what that effect that has on, on somebody that has an extroverted judging function first is that they hear this other feeling or this idea or maybe this other thought and then they gather all these things up and they say, OK, what's, what's the best way that I can get all these judgments and then link them all together like a jigsaw and then figure out a better judgment for the world. So they're trying to improve their systems. Um, they're trying to say, I need to understand how to feel about the world in the best way or think about the world in the best way um, in order to make a, the best judgments about the world. Okay, so that's how FE and TE both work. Extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling both want to hear new, fresh feelings and fresh thoughts so that they can get a better view and make more you know make superior judgments themselves so and i'll just quickly say this as well is that when you talk about intuitive types because this kind of relates to the fact that as an enfj the closest thing to me with extroverted thinking is an entj when you're talking about intuitive types that have maybe ni second which is what i and entjs have um you can see this phenomenon in which an ENFJ and an ENTJ will probably be able to figure out someone else's judgment before they've even expressed it necessarily. Because you can just pick up things like a radio. So you have a kind of wavelength that you're going to pick, pick things up off of other people. And that's important because otherwise I can't really explain um, the comparison between the two, which I'll do at the end. So now we have to kind of examine the differences, okay? And I'm going to write, I'm going to read these out in pairs of sentences, okay? So extroverted feeling wants to decide things in the world by including morality and feeling the essence of an idea in another person, okay? And then there's a consequence in themselves, okay? And extroverted thinking wants to decide by including facts and logic and they bounce their ideas, sorry, they bounce their thoughts off of other people to improve their own by comparing notes. Okay, but whatever, but ultimately, whatever they discuss, they want this thing to work properly. Okay, that's what extroverted thinking does. Okay, so the process in the extroverted feeler goes inside them. I can feel how that person is feeling. Then once the extroverted feeler gets more information, they get further, uh, they, they, um, they can further that feeling and nurture it internally. So they'll say, I can feel how that person is feeling and I can feel it myself. Okay. And whereas extroverted thinking tends to be, when I hear the other person's thoughts, I want to know how practical and useful they are. Okay. Then once their extroverted thinking, get, thinking gets more information, they can further that thought and nurture it internally in the same way. I can use that thought and improve my own thought process, processes and knowledge base. Okay. That's the kind of difference there. So it's, I can feel how that person is feeling and feel it myself, or I can use that thought and improve my own thought processes and knowledge base. That's the kind of main difference, okay? Now, both of these types, when they're on their own, are able to stack these things better and then figure out how they feel or how they think about things. Um, since when you're on your own, of course, you're more capable of stacking these things up properly because if you're constantly out there using your extroverted feeling trying to figure out what other people feel or other people think then you're constantly going to be um engaged in that and not necessarily figure out how you feel or how you think about it or then and, and finally get a construct that you're happy with so and then the last thing is is that about maturity really so extroverted feeling finds it hard to know how it feels okay until it's matured because it's asking how other people feel all the time to figure out how the moral field works. Now, the comparison between that and the extroverted thinking is trying to figure out how objects and things and systems work. 
Okay, so really that's what the extrovert thinking there is, thinker is trying to do, They're trying to figure out how how things, systems, objects, stuff works to improve a system. Whereas extroverted feeling is to do with the relationship. So it's saying, right, I want to figure out how a relationship works and how relationships between people work, really. So you can see how they're similar, but they have a very opposite way of pr prioritizing the world. Okay, so that's really the difference. Um, to make it really clear, and this will kind of finally be the, the last thing that I talk about this, I really have to think about how the ENTJ's relationship with the world is. Um, and the best way of doing that is to tell you exactly what I'm doing right now as an ENFJ and then compare it how, to how an ENTJ would be working. So uh, basically, as myself, I'm speaking to an audience right now. I'm talking to uh, YouTube as an ENFJ. Okay, so what I'm hoping to do is to help teach and inform my audience of something that they were possibly unaware of before. Okay, I hope that my message will disseminate and improve people's understanding of themselves and of others and improving other people's lives. I hope that it will make people more aware of something they didn't know before and that something is then passed on to others, generating a ripple effect. I want me and my group to become more consciously aware of how to relate to people, how to join, how to connect and how to make better moral, a better moral decision or how to relate in a clearer and happier way with other people. This will make relationships better and make everyone happier. That's my aim. And that's a very extroverted feeling way of doing things, right? Whereas with an ENTJ, when they're speaking to an audience, what they're hoping to do is to help teach and inform the audience for the express purpose of getting them to do something which has an achievement at the end. And they want to make they want to make a better um, system at the end, so they gather, they'll gather a group of people and make something useful happen, which is great in that way. Okay, they want uh, and they they then want this job or achievement or thing to be out in the world and to improve their own competitive standing and improve the workings of the system. Okay, their purpose is towards efficacy and creating a more effective world environment. They, also, they are less concerned, however, with the moral implications and the feelings of other people within the system. Right? So that's really where I stand with all of that. And I think that kind of explains the difference and the similarities between extroverted feeling and, and extroverted thinking. I hope it makes a lot of sense. Now, I still have time just quickly to get in a couple of seconds about another thing, which is basically... You have a different brand of of, of 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 judging, okay, and a different brand of extroverted judging, okay. So, because you're because I'm an ENFJ and ENTJs are ENTJs, there's a way of judging the world, and I'm judging the world based on my feelings. So, what's really important to me is how other people feel. So, if I'm with a group of people and they're all feeling happy with what's happening, then if say if you're an ENFJ and you're with a bunch of some perceiver types then they'll probably be trying to do something which they're finding fun and they're finding cool and exciting. And the thing about that is that as an ENFJ, I may not be enjoying it all that much myself, but I go along with it because, or I may go along with it, as long as it doesn't clash with an extremely important moral internal judgment that I've decided on. Um, because everybody else is going to be happy if I follow that along. So it may well mean that ENFJs can possibly look like perceivers as well, if they're with a bunch of other perceivers. And the other thing that will happen is, of course, is that they'll feel lonely in a crowd because they'll be the one that is... Um, they'll be the one that's uh, kind of going along with this idea and actually not really agreeing with it completely. So there may be a sense that other people see this person and they think, well... I don't really know who they are because they're they're just kind of going along with it and they don't really get a sense of who the ENFJ is, which is why we're good at being chameleon-like. Um, so really that's all I have time for, unfortunately. I had one little extra side note, but I think it's largely unimportant. So my next video is going to do with introverted intuition and introverted sensing because that's the next thing in my stack. 
And I want to make a comparison between the two because I think that's going to be very interesting, I hope. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, and you can feel free to leave comments or tell me I'm wrong or whatever else you want to do. And I will speak to you soon.